If you've ever dreamed of a garden bed that feeds itself, aerates itself, and improves season after season without constant intervention, then what you're really dreaming of is a living worm habitat. Worms are nature's hidden workforce, and when you create the right conditions for them, they'll reward you with fluffy, fertile soil, higher crop yields, and fewer weeds, all with minimal input. But here's the part most gardeners miss. Worms don't just show up because you mulched. They need the right combination of food, moisture, and structure to stay and multiply. Today we're diving deep into exactly how you can build a self-sustaining worm habitat right inside your raised bed. This isn't vermicomposting, it's better, because once it's set up properly, the worms work full-time, day and night, turning your garden into a nutrient-producing machine, and you don't even need to lift a shovel. Raised beds naturally lend themselves to worm-friendly conditions. The defined borders help retain moisture. They're easy to layer with organic matter. And they tend to warm up earlier in the season than ground-level beds, which encourages early worm activity. But not all raised beds automatically become worm havens. If the soil is dry, compacted, or lacking food, worms won't thrive. That's why creating the right foundation is crucial. A successful worm habitat, you know, kind of mimics what you'd find on the forest floor. Layers of decaying material, consistent moisture, and really minimal disturbance. With that in mind, I set out to turn my raised bed into a living ecosystem, not just a container of dirt. I started by loosening the existing soil without tilling deeply, just enough to aerate the bottom and allow roots and worms to move freely. Then came the layering process. The base was a thick mat of shredded leaves, dry, crumbled, and slightly aged. These act as the carbon-rich foundation that breaks down slowly and gives structure to the soil as it decomposes. On top of that I spread a generous layer of homemade compost. This wasn't perfect black compost. It was half-finished, chunky, and still breaking down. That's important! because it contains the microbial life that worms feed on plus kitchen scraps that act like bait to draw them in. If you've ever dropped a banana peel on the soil and checked it a few days later, you know how fast worms find it. The next layer was shredded green weeds and grass trimmings. These are nitrogen-rich and break down fast, generating warmth and microbial activity, two things worms absolutely love. With those three layers in place, leaves, compost, and greens, the bed was alive with food and moisture-holding capacity. Then came the magic ingredient water. If there's one thing that will make or break your worm habitat, it's water. Worms breathe through their skin and need constant moisture to survive, but too much water, especially in a raised bed with poor drainage, can drown them. So the goal is balance. After building the layers, I thoroughly soaked the entire bed. The water needs to reach all the way down, activating decomposition and making the habitat hospitable. From there, I covered the surface with a soft mulch blanket, shredded straw and more leaves. This final layer insulates the habitat, keeps the sun off the topsoil, and locks in moisture. It also prevents the surface from crusting over and drying out, which can send worms retreating deep into the soil or away altogether. Within a week, I noticed something astonishing. Earthworms, some red wigglers, some night crawlers, were surfacing in the early mornings. Castings began to appear in the upper compost layer, and when I gently pulled back the mulch after two weeks, the compost was alive with movement, small worms, baby worms, and even cocoons. By the end of the first month, the shredded greens were nearly unrecognizable. The compost layer had started to take on a darker, more uniform appearance, and the soil beneath the original layer, once crusty and light brown, was already loosening and darkening. That's when I realized something critical. I hadn't added a single scoop of fertilizer. The worms and microbes were doing all the work. 
The raised bed had become a self-regenerating cycle of organic breakdown, nutrient cycling, and aeration. The key to keeping a worm habitat thriving in a raised bed is simple. Don't disrupt it. Every time you dig, till, or flip the soil, you risk killing worms, breaking tunnels, and halting microbial activity. Instead, you want to feed from the top. Each time you harvest or replant, just add another layer of food, like chopped weeds, spent crops, kitchen scraps, or even more leaves. The worms will rise to the surface, feed, and then return below. They carry organic matter down naturally, creating channels that aerate the soil and allow water to penetrate deeply. The castings they leave behind are packed with plant-available nutrients and help hold moisture like a sponge. Even in winter, the deeper layers stay active if you keep mulch on top. Then, in spring, the worm population just explodes, ready to support your next planting cycle. If you've done everything right but still don't see worm activity, here are a few things to check. First, make sure your compost or mulch wasn't sprayed with chemicals. Pesticides and herbicides kill worms instantly. Second, verify that your cardboard or leaf mulch isn't too thick or dry. Worms avoid compacted dry zones. Lastly, consider inoculating your bed with a handful of worms from a healthy garden or local compost pile. Once they have food and moisture, they'll multiply quickly. In the end, building a worm habitat in your raised bed is like installing a free full-time workforce. No machines, no synthetic inputs, just a thriving underground network improving your soil day after day. The transformation is real, the benefits are long-lasting, and best of all, it takes almost no maintenance. If you're serious about growing healthier vegetables, richer soil, and reducing your need for fertilizers or tilling, this method works, and it works fast. If you want your garden to feed itself and regenerate naturally, start by feeding the soil, not the plant. Worms will do the rest. Layer your compost, mulch with intention, keep it moist, and then step back. Your raised bed will never be the same again. If you found this guide helpful, hit subscribe to Hydro Haven. Leave a comment about your worm sightings and share this video with another gardener who's tired of lifeless beds and store-bought fertilizers. Let's bring the soil back to life, one worm at a time.